people make comments to me like, you can't be allergic to milk, it's not going to kill you. Actually, it can kill me and it almost has killed me. I don't really like to think about what would have happened, to be honest, if we hadn't come. So I live with my mum, my dad, my sister and my brother and my dog. For me. She um well she loves fashion, that's what so that's what she's studying at university at the moment. She's very independent, she's always been really independent. I've been allergic to milk and egg since I was born, so I do have to avoid a lot. Throughout my life I've had a few occasions of having anaphylaxis. Some of the symptoms of anaphylaxis you can see, such as uh, redness, hives, swelling, and some of them you may not be able to see, like someone not being able to breathe. Also, coughing can be an indicator because someone's airways are shutting, as well as someone telling you that they're having an anaphylaxis. You should always take it very seriously if someone says that they are, believe them, because we know ourselves well. I always have to make sure if I'm going out with people that they know where my pens are and that they're in my bag and how to use them. She's got good friends, she's very lucky. I went out with my friends, we went to a nightclub and afterwards we went to the restaurant next door. We went in there and I told them that I was allergic to milk and egg and could I have a vegan burger, which is obviously not supposed to contain any milk or egg anyways. I ate the burger, I knew I was having a reaction and I know my body very well so I gave myself the adrenaline pen. It wasn't enough and then I lost consciousness and one of my close friends that I was with gave me my second adrenaline pen. A friend saved her life. That's the bottom line. I think she'd have been dead on the pavement outside the restaurant without her friend. When I have an anaphylaxis, you're not supposed to move because you can go into cardiac arrest. They wouldn't listen, they made me walk from the ambulance. When I was in the rating room, I told them again, I feel very agitated. I feel like I'm starting not to be able to breathe. They kind of dismissed me, left me in the corridor. I started to, to deteriorate very quickly. The phone rang, it's about three o'clock in the morning, woke me up and you know that's never a good time to get a phone call. And Ella's friend was on the other end of the phone and was crying. So I actually thought we'd lost her, to be honest. My husband and I jumped up and got in the car and phoned and as we were driving, they told us which hospital they were going to. And then luckily my mum and dad had been driving and they found me there. We started shouting for somebody to come and help anybody because there wasn't any, it didn't seem like there was anybody around and, and someone came and I think they then realised how serious a situation she was in. So my husband picked her up and ran with her into recess. And then we had to wait to see what the outcome was. Um, we could have lost that. And I feel like we nearly did. That's, so that's not okay. There is more training that's needed and more awareness. And also just, I think it's so important to listen to someone that's telling you something.